We have a lot of news to break down on today's show and getting into tomorrow's big matchup that we will be covering live. We've got a great episode, and most importantly, you're going to find out how our personal waivers go on today's episode. Like the video, subscribe, leave a comment, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Wednesday, October 5th. Jason Moore is here. Howdy ho. <laughs> Mike Wright is here. Howdy ho. That's what we're going with? <laughs> That's what I went with. That's not what I would go with now. But after, after in hindsight? Out loud. Yeah, in, in hindsight, it was, a, it was a mistake. But, you know, we live and we learn. We move on. What do you even do if you approach somebody in real life on the street and you say hello, like a polite hello, and they respond with that. Hello! I mean, that's... Do you, like... Wait. So if I just say that, then people will leave me alone? I think so. I don't think you could get to that level of enthusiasm, Mike. Howdy ho. Yeah, that's what you would get. you get, like, a Western howdy ho. They would, they would ho. still leave you alone. <laughs> they would still leave... People leave you alone... Excellent. ...automatically. Excellent. Yeah, because usually people say... That guy's how's mad. It, how, how's it going? And the response is... <laughs> nothing. Who's the guy from... Uh, <laughs> The app, uh, 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 you what? know, the soccer show. Oi. Oi. Oh, Roy? Yeah. Roy you're Roy Kent. Kent in real life. Uh, okay. Just a heart uh, of gold under that mean facade. He's a handsome, handsome chap. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what we, I heard you say. <laughs> Mike is very handsome. Ride or die on the show today. Thursday night preview. NFL news to talk about. Mailbag. The fantasy football universe is through four weeks. And so we've got data. We know which defenses are uh, shaping up as some of the best in the league. Teams that are struggling. Narratives that are not coming true or are coming true in a big way. So, you know, this is kind of an interesting time of year. I think it's the best time of year to frame trade offers and build out kind of what your future is going to look like. Do you, do you guys agree with that? Yeah, I, I do agree. I think that especially right now in the landscape after a month of football, you have a ton of disappointing running backs. And that's not going to stay how it is the entire season. You know, you look back last year, I think through the first three or four weeks, Jonathan Taylor, who obviously was the number one pick this year, I think he was like the running back 29 or 39. It was uh, – it was not good for the first couple weeks of Jonathan Taylor's season last year. This this happens, and it's funny because if whatever poor whatever bad thing happens in the first month of the season happens, you just move that month to the middle of the season, no problem. It's just, it was just a blip on the radar. But when it happens the first month of the season, oh, man. Right. Joe Mixon? Yeah, Joe Mixon's opportunities are through the roof, and he has squandered and I mean, he has done very little with those opportunities. Yeah, had a bunch of chances on the goal line, didn't get in. A lot of opportunities, expected points. Mike, do you agree that this is a good time to start building trade offers? Maybe, uh, or are you kind of waiting a little bit longer? And does it depend on if you're, you know, two and two, three and one, four and zero? Oh? I mean, you should always, always be looking to improve. Do not just sit on what you think is a fantastic roster. Because they, like, yeah, Javante can happen to I you. I mean, you know, the the wins and losses are so big right now. And, you know, I, I like someone it tweeted at me like, "Oh man, I'm zero and four. Like I'm toast." I'm like, "Yeah, but what if you're nine and five at the end of the year? I mean, like, that's that's something that that can happen. So just make sh you don't don't uh, don't wave the white flag yet." Don't celebrate your championship yet. Make sure you're looking out there. And, and it's at this point, you have to trust the process of fantasy football of finding that volume. And Joe Mixon is a, is a really good example of that. 
Will will it actually get better for Joe Mixon? That's TBD. But you you know that the opportunities are there. In the like, if the offensive line just improves slightly, then Mixon will be tremendously better. I think Austin Eckler is a perfect little microcosm of this discussion. He's the RB three on the year. Sure, I mean we're for and and on the year numbers right now, when someone has just a spike week like that. When there's only been four games and you put up three touchdowns in one week, that's going to catapult you. I'm personally still concerned about Austin Eckler. Well, my, my point there is that, you know, the whole landscape of the running back position can be summed up in the fact that Austin Eckler, in all of the struggles and tumult, is still sitting there at RB3 in total fantasy points. Right. Where, yeah, I mean, you may have a determination about him that's different, you know, about what he is moving forward, but it's just been a rocky road for a lot of those big stars. People don't know what to do with Alvin Kamara. You just lost Javante Williams from the landscape. You lost Jonathan Taylor, or, or you might have lost Jonathan Taylor for this week. If you haven't, you have a hobbled Jonathan Taylor. Christian McCaffrey hasn't been his normal elite self, even though he's been very, he's been very, very good. Very good. He's disappointed the managers who drafted him number one. He hasn't been in the top six on a week yet as you know one of those – huge wins there's a lot of parody at the nfl level right now and i think that's happening a lot in fantasy like our, our entire division in our league of records two and two feels like a two and two type of year right now with the ups and downs but we have a huge amount of the season left the current megalobowl leader by the way uh, eight and oh with 706 points 706 uh the the name of this user is great the shark from jaws 3d Okay. Is in first place. Very specific. Which, I mean, that is a name for the Megalobowl. Yes. So, 706 points. Jason, are you sitting at 7-1? and one? I am sitting at 7-1. and one. You finally took an L. I took an L because last week I scored the second most points in my league. Oh, no. And I played the team that scored the most, but I went 1-1 one and one in that format where you play against the league median. All right. Uh, let's get into ride or die. Ride or Die, presented by Chevrolet. Last week, Jason and Mike both went two for three in Ride or Die. I was just one for three. I should not have doubted Jamal Williams. What a mistake. <laughs> well, we kept moving the line. And we, That's true. That's right, until we found, we, found one. We found that we, a, a line where at least... One person disagreed. All right, week five ride or die predictions. Let's begin with Nick Chubb against the Los Angeles Chargers. The line, 100 plus rushing yards, which he has cleared in three or four games this year. The Chargers defense has been disappointing, to say the least. Ninth most yards uh, per game given up. 6.1 yards per carry. Joey Bosa is out. Ride or die, Nick Chubb, 100 rushing yards. It's a really good high line that I will ride. I believe that, you know, right now uh, the Chargers are 29th in fantasy points given up to the running back position. The I like this game to hit the over. Um, and, I, 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 you know, Chubb is the heart of this team. He's just been unstoppable right now. Currently, I believe the running back, number He's one in fantasy one. football that's I, I wanted to have a sidebar conversation here because we Jason and I you know we, we were talking about Austin Eckler like of where you know I voiced I still have my concerns for him being that top tier player that you drafted and it's okay let's the thought exercise who would you actually try to move Eckler for after the big performance and going through the names like there's not there's not a huge list of names where you'd actually like well yeah I'd I, I would take the upgrade to go to that. And meanwhile, here's Nick Chubb, the player that we didn't bring up in that conversation, right. who is the running back one, is dominating. And if I could, like, he's he's a very, very similar player to, to Derrick Henry. Mm -hmm. And we keep saying, well, you know, Derrick Henry, he's, he's elite. Derrick Henry has two terrible weeks so far. At like 50% of the, of the games, he's been nothing close to what you expected, and we keep dismissing Nick Chubb for, well, he can't possibly keep this up for the season. If I, just, I, if I could trade Nick Chubb for Austin Eckler, I would do it. 
So that's what I really. Yeah, because I want the pass catcher. Yeah, and and I just looked at this. Nick Chubb has scored in three consecutive weeks. He never did that one time last year. Right, but perhaps this is an outlier season for him. I mean, he didn't score in week one, and yet was the running back fourteen with 141 rushing yards. It, it's sure. So, do you are you saying you believe that is happening? Because that is you have to make that determination in your mind if you're going to go out right. and de decline that kind of a trade or hang on to Nick Chubb to be your you know your top 10 star i want that i don't know if i fully believe that nick chubb is that you just but, want to give him some but, respect but i want to bring up the name of like he mm -hmm. is despite what he has done for an entire month now he still is not even mentioned in the, in the elite in the top the elite. three top five yeah so, like, yeah because right now we were talking about who are the top three we're like okay it's probably saquon yeah derrick henry christian mccaffrey in the in the current landscape and then you probably go a couple more before you get and you're like shot. well dalvin cook and it's like well dalvin cook was playing first and second down it, Here, here's know. something worth mentioning he is 12 percent higher in terms of percentage of the snaps this year than he was last year higher than the year before that so you know trying to find that angle it's damn. a good sign for it being sticky because the the big worry with chubb is not just that he doesn't catch passes that's that's number one number two is cream hunt that he splits work and can, you know, most of these other great backs, Saquon Barkley is not splitting work right. with Matt Burita. You know, uh, Chubb has another good running back here. And we saw in week one when he got into the hunt zone and Hunt was hunting those touchdowns yeah. down. Denied. Uh, yeah. So my, but I'm, I'm glad you brought some respect here to Nick Chubb. Now, I really hope you die. <laughs> not, not personally, but I hope you choose to go against his 100-yard rushing line here after after all that. No, I'm going to ride. All right. I'm going to ride, ride with, with Nicholas me. Chubb. I guess I have to die then. Oh, oh. you're just going to play the game? Well, I mean, I'm right on the edge here. Did you hear me on the soapbox for Nick Chubb? I, I did, but, you know, the defense, Cleveland's defense is um, missing some pieces, and the Chargers are due for an offensive kind of explosion, one of those upper echelon games. Like, Justin Herbert has been good, but I think he's sitting like seven at the quarterback position right now, despite throwing nine touchdowns in four weeks. So I think they're due for a, a big, big game. Uh, so I think that might put more of the Kareem Hunt snaps out there on the field. So I will I will go against you two. I'll play the game. Tyler Lockett against the New Orleans Saints. Will he have six-plus receptions? His last three weeks, nine, nine, six, while seeing 11, 11, and eight targets. I'm going to ride. Tyler I Lockett's a great player. I will hold your hand and ride alongside you. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, obviously last week it was the DK Metcalf show until he had to leave the field for a dump ski. It was still the DK Metcalf show. <laughs> it was, <laughs> but during that time, that's when Tyler Lockett got a lot of his work. That being said, Mar Marshawn Lattimore um, is yeah. there, and I think he will be focused more on DK Metcalf. Tyler Lockett should be necessary for the Seahawks. We're all waiting for the wheels to fall off for Geno Smith and... What if he? What if he doesn't stay like as hot as he is now? But what if? What if Geno Smith figured something out with this offense in the draft season? I I'm riding with Lockett. By to the way. me, Lockett was just sitting there as a an obvious value, despite all of the negative uh, attention to the Seattle offense. It was just too. It was just too late in drafts. Geno is completing a league high seventy seven percent of passes, and you say, oh, dink and dunk." No. Higher yard per attempt than Rodgers, Brady, Allen, Herbert, Mahomes. I think he's at 7.9. Geno Smith. So, Geno is playing great <laughs> football. And they are a, they're exactly the same right now as the Detroit Lions. They can stop nobody, but they can throw the football and move, move it down the field. And you have two talented wide receivers like Jared Goff and Geno Smith. If you're in a position where you have to stream them, you're going to make the person you play very upset because losing to Geno Smith and Jared Goff, that's not a thing you really enjoy. Yeah. Uh, the listener league, our 14 teamer, uh, my team finally showed up because they've just, they have not been. And I got, I got destroyed by Geno freaking Smith. <laughs> How'd that feel? Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Terry McLaurin against Tennessee. Will he be a top 24 fantasy wide receiver? 
We know Jahan Dotson's going to miss the first oh, four man. weeks for Terry McLaurin. 25th wide receiver, 37th, 21st, 76th. I mean. And that first number 25 was saved by a late touchdown where he was sure. not really involved much that game. Only had four targets. But Jahan Dotson out of the way. Tennessee, a pretty easy matchup. I want to see how you guys ride or die first. <laughs> I would feel more uncomfortable with this ride if it wasn't taking place in D.C. So I think them at home, no Jahan Dotson, target concentration going. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ride. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in there with Terry McLaurin. I wish this was a top thirty line. Yeah, but I'm gonna ride. I uh, I I find that it is better to you know choose the non ride route because it, it, it's like you know choosing unders. There's just yeah. so many other ways where a player can not hit the line. Maybe other people do good and it's not his fault. Maybe an injury happens. But I actually like Terry McLaurin a lot this week. I like him in DFS. I think where he's priced versus not having Jahan Dotson there, which uh, Curtis Samuel isn't taking targets away from Terry McLaurin. They they play two different – you know, he's the slot, the short game. Jahan Dotson was actually taking some of those deep shots away from Terry McLaurin. With him out of the way, I think Terry McLaurin's a very good play. So I feel obligated – to ride and today I think is the first time I've ride ride ride. Yeah, it probably is because you've been so negative. So negative, yeah. But uh, let's Terry, ride. <laughs> Terry McLaurin is where where are we on Terry McLaurin the player? Or do we still consider him an upper echelon? He wide hangs receiver? out with DJ Moore. Okay, they hang out together. They fro yo. They talk about Carson Wentz and Baker Mayfield. Exceptional athletes, very good wide receivers. Well, he just he just got the bag, right? Mm -hmm. Let, let's put it this way. Here, here's a good standard. If you handed Terry McLaurin the Amon Ross St. Brown role in Detroit, do I think he's a top 15 wide receiver? Probably. So he's good enough to be that. My point was how frustrating is it to cheer for Terry McLaurin, to have Terry McLaurin on your fantasy teams where – his athleticism's off the charts. He's shown you he can be a true number one wide receiver, and yet he's pulling in 16% of the, the targets for Washington so far. Yeah, I mean, the, the, like that is, that's, that's, not a, that's not a number one wide receiver. He was frustrating when he had all of the targets, being forced his way by Ty, Taylor Heineke because of the fact that some games it worked out, some games it didn't. Jahan Dotson's a great player. Curtis Samuel was non-existent last year. Um. I you know long term confidence in McLaurin in a dynasty league I have none. Sure, it's that's that was I just wanted to have the discussion of like what are you doing with with a player who was so so good you know he's good but there, you're not getting anything from him on the field that of reflective of what you believe he could be or his draft spot uh for top twenty four great opportunity to do it this week but. I'm going to I'm going to say die. I'm going to bet against him. Who would you rather have in a dynasty league, Terry McLaurin or Rashad Bateman? Ooh, that's that's, that's a really good question. I, I'm gonna I'm going. It's very tough. This is not easy. But I lean the Bateman side. Um, we've seen a lot of Terry McLaurin, and he's good, not great. And I think Rashad Bateman will be at least that. Well, so what Terry McLaurin is. And has been, I think Bateman will get to that level. As Jahan Dotson <laughs> gets better and, uh, you know, next year, Jahan Dotson easily could be the number one target in this. I'd offense. rather have Dotson than McLaurin in a dynasty league for sure. Yeah. If yeah. you go down the run of rookies really quickly, are there any of the rookies you would not take over Terry McLaurin? So, um, Traylon Burks in a dynasty league. Uh, I might still go McLaurin. There. I would take Burks. That's the closest one that I can think yeah. of. But so I Olave Wilson, yep. Jamison Williams. What about Alec Pierce, Christian Watson? No. You would take McLaurin. I yeah. would take McLaurin there. So I would take both of those guys too. Oh wow! You and yeah, you're, because and I, you're riding this week. Sounds like you want to kick McLaurin. Well, out he of only <laughs> McLaurin only had four top thirty weeks all of last year. So riding is the wrong. We've all made the wrong decision, except right. for Mike. You can change your decision. No, nope. I'm switching in. to die. It's okay. nope, 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 nope. I allow nope. it. No, nope. what? Jason yeah, is he I'm is in it. charge of ride or die. Apparently, <laughs> yes. well, um, I'm changing mine. In <laughs> are you going? No, okay, no. no. 
Um, yeah, and, and the reason I say that I would take all of those is because of what, like Jason said it, McLaurin's good, not great. He's never going to demand more. He's not He's not Jamar Chase. He's not Justin Jefferson. And he's 27 years old, which is insane. Like he's never going to be, his ceiling has been established. They have, they've put the ceiling in. In dynasty leagues, it does. They've installed. Like that. They've installed it. And if you're happy with the ceiling, and that suits your team better, cool. Because Alec Pierce may never hit that, and Christian Watson may never hit that ceiling. But at least they could install a higher ceiling. Yeah, I mean, last his career on, on the season, he was the wide receiver 28, wide receiver yeah. 21, yeah, wide receiver 25. He is a low end wide receiver two. DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin, dynasty. Last time I will ask a question about Terry McLaurin today. I I'm gonna go DJ Moore in yeah. Dynasty, and the reason why is just because he's younger. <laughs> n not just because he's younger; that is part of it. But I think there is a world with this upcoming schedule for the Carolina Panthers, where they start closing up shop in a couple of weeks, and they end up near the tippy top of the NFL draft. And if this is a good quarterback draft class, if they can actually end up drafting a legitimate. You know, if they get the number one, number two, number three pick, and they can actually get a quarterback in there, and obviously they would replace Matt Rule at the end of the season if they've got a top three pick, there's a glimmer of hope for DJ Moore's future. Yeah, maybe in a few years he might become. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> when he's 27. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was Ride or Die presented by Chevy Silverado. Learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. I guess if you're drafting a quarterback at the tippy top, it's more hopeful than the situation. Like like right now, we're all still doubting what Pittsburgh wide receivers will be able to do year one with Kenny Pickettsburg. Sure. And the Manders. Pickettsburg? Yeah, I'm trying oh, them all, brother. Oh, man. That was... I'm trying them all. Pickettsburg. I think I like that better than just Kenny Pittsburgh. Kenny Pickettsburg? <laughs> I mean, it sounds so stupid. Oh, they're all very stupid. Kenny Pickettsburg. <laughs> I, I like how stupid it is. All right. Um, all right. The Keenan Allen situation in Los Angeles, labeled as day-to-day, -day, has not played since week one, left Thursday last week early, likely a setback. I mean, is there any chance that he plays? Doesn't seem like it. And even even if he goes, that's a, I mean that's super sketchy. Yeah, it would be good for Herbert, but I don't know that you can put Keenan Allen in your lineup until you've got proof of concept. It's like it's like Chris Godwin this past Sunday with the game time decision. Okay, yeah, Chris Godwin had played a full game and was you know was productive, but going into that matchup, I mean, like putting him into your actual lineup is with all of the things that could go wrong. You need to see one week. Especially with a hamstring injury that seems like it's exactly. had a setback because the chance of him coming back too soon off the setback is is way higher than zero where right. all of a sudden you play a couple snaps and then he's out of the game. Are you trading for Keenan Allen and are you trading for Justin Herbert based on the return of Keenan Allen coming? I, I think Herbert is a good target right now because I th his days are brighter ahead. He can be good with or without Keenan Allen. If Keenan Allen comes back, he's just going to be better. And Herbert hasn't really – I think he's disappointed most fantasy managers who drafted him high and expected, you know, a top two or three quarterback. So now's the time for me. Tom Brady is not practicing today. He's in a T-shirt watching. Not sure if it'll be a rest day, his shoulder – Part of the plan with a 45-year-old quarterback. That hit, the hit he took during the game on on his throwing arm was it looked rough. <laughs> I mean, he got right back in there, but it was, not just the t-shirt, Kyle. That's all the report says. Just, just the t-shirt, Donald says, Duck oh, in it. I don't know. Oh, oh and, no. uh, this isn't Antonio oh, Brown. Cheek, okay, this is Tom Brady, yeah. future Hall of Famer. It, Antonio Brown would show up in just the t-shirt. Yeah, he he would. Tom Brady does have some some personal off the field stuff going on, so maybe this is a power move by him. Yeah, just showing up without your britches. 
Oh, oh you're yeah, still thinking okay. he's naked. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, I was leaning into the joke, fellas. I see. No, I thought we had moved forward. I really hope he is okay. It's a good point to re- remember that hit where he yeah. fell, and he basically fell on his elbow, which those those often hurt the shoulder, and uh, he's such a good value this week in DFS that, man, get healthy, Brady. Why, why does the report mention his T-shirt? I mean, what is the point of saying he's in a T-shirt? Is it just say he's not watching in pads? He's just watching in his cl- what, what kind? What of a t-shirt? weird report, Greg. <laughs> is this a polo? Is this, I mean, I said T-shirt, so I guess they're. they're I mean, he's in a T-shirt watching. This ain't no button up. No. Okay. Most players wouldn't stand on the side wearing just a T-shirt. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> This is so fun. Uh, Gus Edwards, designated to return from the reserve PUP list. Yes, we should have mentioned him yesterday on the waiver show because we knew that this time was uh, possible. Do you agree with that, Jason? Should we have mentioned him on the waiver show, or is he just a um, stick in the wheel for J.K. Dobbins? Um, No, I I think that he's someone that should be mentioned. The, The dearth of running backs out there, You've, you've got to you've got to pick him up. I mean, if we're talking about Brian Robinson, who I still feel like he's in a three way timeshare. Gus Edwards comes back. You know, hopefully he's in a two way timeshare of a team that historically wants to run the ball more than pass. They just haven't been able to because they've had all their running backs injured. And just, he's worth a look. And Justice Hill got hurt during the game on a, on a like a absolute manimal run. I don't know if if you guys saw it, but Justice Hill got hurt essentially right after he got the ball and then was able to still limp for like seven yards before getting off the field. Oh, he Greg Jennings? He did. <laughs> Greg Jennings. <laughs> Speaking of Brian Robinson, very good chance to make his debut in week five, designated to return to practice. He was designated, uh, you, you know, marked active the first day that they could do it. And even though you have 21 days, it was a good sign that he'll get on the field right away. I have uh, found it interesting when when these various uh, reports come out about Brian Robinson, how they label his injury, Brian, because like I don't think like gunshot is on the normal. It's not in the system. It's lower body, is what they're saying. Mm, okay, so that makes sense. Yep. But excited to see him on the field. Yep. Uh, the Broncos' offensive coordinator came out and said Melvin Gordon will carry the load. Obviously, that's actually good to hear. We like I mean, to hear that. Yeah. You 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 worried with the neck injury and what we saw of Boone them signing Latavius Murray. Um, Melvin Gordon was kind of an afterthought because he's rostered in almost every league. But obviously, in any league that he w- was on waivers, he should be a massive bid. But it's too late if you're listening to this now. All right, uh, what else do we have? Some Thursday night football updates. By the way, we will be live on Thursday night football. Hey, very excited. Yes. Yay. I got Melvin Gordon in uh, one of our leagues. He was available on waivers in one of our leagues. <laughs> he right, was? Just right in the middle of the... <laughs> Yay. <laughs> that was the... Um, yeah. How much did you pay? 70. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. that's worth it. Yeah. Um, anything else from your waiver report? Do you want to do a report here on uh, the news? Yes. Yeah, second place was uh, Andy Holloway, who did mm. not get him. I think I had 35 left in my fab in, that, in that league. Yeah. Congratulations, Jason. Thank you. It's a big moment for you. It is. I needed him after tr- after accidentally. Here's a pro tip on trades. Yes. When you offer a trade and is not seen or accepted, don't leave it there for weeks uh, because I just traded away Jonathan Taylor for Christian McCaffrey to my opponent this week because I forgot that trade existed from long ago. If we want to report other waiver news specific to our league, this would be a good time to <laughs> mention that Papa Josh um, – Purchased himself some Caleb Huntley for thirty-one fab. Oh, the next closest bid was like zero. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that you know, you it's screaming. amazing because like, it, here's the fantasy psychology, right? If the next closest bid was thirty, Papa Josh is a genius. Yep, and you feel great. If the next highest bid is zero, you're a moron. Still spin 31 in both scenarios, right? The net is 31. Um, I picked up Robert Woods. We talked about uh, okay. that situation. Mike Boone went for 10. Isaiah McKenzie went for 9. 
So those are lay of the land after yesterday's waiver show. I bid nine on Boone, so it's the opposite. It's the oh. inverse, where I feel stupid because I could have gone to 11, and I did not. Mm. You had a cheapskate. Mm. And I <laughs> picked up Sky Moore, who you dropped, Mike. Yeah, good I, luck with that. Uh, if if you weren't yeah. aware, Sky Moore was running a lot of routes for the first time, had a good targets per route run, but didn't have a big box score day. Okay. Just letting people yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, bra <laughs> brag it up. Uh, Russell Wilson limited in practice with the shoulder. And um, guys, oh, do we man. have the drop anymore? I got a snake, man. This is an important moment on the show. Jaguars legend, Blake Bortles, announced his retirement. Can I get that one more time? I got a snake, man. Oh, man. We, ha we had a snake, and we now did. this snake wow. slithers off into the sunset. Good man. for you, Blake. We have a lot of reptile-based jokes on the show. We live in a desert. Oh, and is that there's a lot is? of lizard people in the NFL, <laughs> according to them. Well, it's just a lot of lizard people in the world. Right. That was today's news and notes <laughs> presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break. Back with the Thursday night preview. Speaking of living in a desert, I'm very hot right now. Can we not? We don't have any. No air sort conditioning of in this building. Air conditioning mm. to get it going. It's maxed out. Man. Yeah. Guy, have you thought about turning the fire off? The, the, the little campfire you guys got what, back the, there? The sun? We'll stop stoking the furnace. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, let's talk about this game. Thursday Night Breakdown. Well, we will be live on Twitch for the very first time with you during this game, calling the game, sharing fantasy analysis, breaking things down, reacting. Hopefully watching Jonathan Taylor. I think we're all rooting to watch Jonathan Taylor, are well, we not? I am now. Absolutely. I still am as well. You want Jonathan Taylor hopefully active in this game. It's better. It's more exciting. It's uh, a, a bigger storyline for fantasy. Either way, you're going to have Melvin Gordon on the other side. So yes. there's lots of excitement here. Uh, so we will be live on Twitch, ballerslive.com. If you follow us on Twitter, at the FF Ballers, we'll be sending out uh, notifications as soon as we go live. 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. With you for the first half of that game. The Colts, 1-2-1. One, and one, Taking on the Denver Broncos, who are sitting at 2-2 two and two right now. Um, oh, did we get breaking news? We ah. did, yeah. Kyle, go ahead and report this. This is... Uh, do we need the drop? Uh, sure. I mean, do we, have, do we have the drop sitting around? Here we go. Breaking news. Kyle, go ahead. Buccaneers great. Cole Beasley has decided to retire effective immediately. <laughs> Buccaneers great. He's ready to be with his family after playing 11 seasons. It's time to be a full-time dad and husband. Um, what? <laughs> this, is, this is called, oh, Julio and Chris Goblin are healthy. I don't get to play anymore. I'm that was retired. a quick return. All right. <laughs> Back to this breakdown. It's just it took a few extra games to really you know, realize does actually, I want to be with my family. This actually does happen quite a bit. When it, when an when an aging player switches teams, they play a game or two, and then they're just like done. They just realize it's over. All right. So it's I mean, it's not in the NFL yeah Reggie anymore. Wayne, right? Remember camp with the Patriots for oh, Reggie oh, Wayne? Oh, oh. Yeah, Patriots camp does that to a lot of players. That's fair. All right. Uh, yeah, did it to Eric Decker as well. I think. Yeah. Oh man, I think so. All right, the DraftKings Sportsbook line for this Thursday night football game is Denver minus three and a half. The over-under is just 42 and a half. Uh, these are two under underperforming teams based on uh, preseason expectations. Jason was a, um, you know, the wide open, you know, you know, the wide open NFC, you said the Colts would go and compete there. Uh, this has been really bad. I mean, this has not been the defense you had last year. Uh, the offense is, is definitely missing explosiveness right now, and you can hope that they find their groove. Brand new quarterback, the offensive line, Jonathan Taylor. Like, there's not a storyline with Indianapolis. That's a positive one. Uh, is there? The store, No, no. The storyline is the way that their season started, they looked like they were opening up the passing game. They were not just going to ground and pound with Jonathan Taylor. And they could not protect Matt Ryan. Remember coming into the season, it was, oh, Matt Ryan finally gets a good offensive line. Yeah. Because the Colts had a great offensive line. The Falcons had a bad one. 
Not true. Um, apparently, this offensive line is is banged up, hurt, or uh, lacking the talent that they had last year because it has been putrid on offense. Their passing game has not been able to get going, so then they said, okay, we're going to give the ball to Jonathan Taylor, second half of week one. They rode him uh, to some offensive success. They are 1-2-1, one, and, one, and we want to say, oh, well, it's just the offense that is disappointing here, but their defense – has been maybe even more disappointing. They're and then they get Shaq Leonard back, and he gets concussed and breaks his nose in his game that he returned. Oof. Yeah, so he uh, barely, out. barely returned. He's not going to play this game. Their defense is bad. Their offense is bad. And they're going up against an offense that's struggling, but a defense that is not. The, the Denver Broncos defense has been uh, very good. I don't see a lot of great plays on the Indianapolis Colts side. Well, the one thing that we've seen consistently over the past four weeks has been the impact of the gigantic tight ends for Indianapolis. When you have Michael Pittman dot, dot, dot at your wide receiver uh, position, Moali Cox, two touchdowns last week, Jelani Woods, two the week before. I believe Granson, did he score in week one or just was heavily involved? The All three of them are being used. Alec Pierce came back. He was the target leader last week. He was the fantasy leader last week at the wide receiver position. I'm not recommending starting Alec Pierce, but it's very possible that he has a role the rest of the season that grows and continues yeah. to grow. Yeah, he's he is a rookie, so he should naturally get better over the course of the season. Uh, Michael Pittman, disappointing the, this past week, but you're still playing him. Uh, I am. I, it, it does. We're four weeks in, and it feels like it's been a roulette for – the the Colts tight ends but Mo Alley Cox did take a pretty substantial jump in snaps and running routes and like was the clear number one this past week that could easily flip back but that is just that's at least something to keep your eye on where the Broncos I mean they've been a shutdown defense but in terms of fantasy points 20th against fantasy tight end so if there is a slight weakness for this defense for for fantasy it might end up being Mo Ali Cox. The, yeah, yeah, baby. He's so big. Yeah, I feel like trying to guess which one is is difficult because um, you are hoping for that big touchdown. Now, Naeem Hines, if Jonathan Taylor was to be out in this game, Denver's giving up the second highest yards per attempt to running backs. So this is another reason why if Jonathan Taylor plays, I'm playing him. But Naeem Hines, is he a flex play without Jonathan Taylor? Yeah, I I think he's a flex play because he'll end up catching the ball. You're, they're not going to be able to run a lot without Jonathan Taylor. And the the Colts defense has been bad, this game being at home for Denver. And, you know, th their offense has clicked a little bit better over the last two weeks than the first two weeks. So if they are able to score, then you would expect the Colts to be in a negative game script where you're using Naeem Hines. If you're in a PPR league, and that would only be a, a full PPR play for me. Russell Wilson against this defense that has struggled. Will we ever get what we determined to be a breakout game from this offense? Losing Javante Williams doesn't help that. Melvin Gordon will get the start. Indianapolis has given up the six most receptions to the running back position. Okay. So if he's heavily utilized, Gordon is a strong play in this game. Cortland Sutton has been great. Jerry Judy finally scored last week. Jerry Judy. If you get the right week, you're very fortunate. Is there anybody else you'd mention on this <laughs> offense? I and mean, would you start Russ? I mean, that's another question. Yeah, Russ is the big question because uh, highly drafted, super disappointing, had a good week last week, but overall has looked like we're, we're questioning if he's even still good. But I, we have to remember, even though this is the new system where you're going, oh, you're going to let Russ, Russ cook, if you look back at the last couple of years, and, and not just last year when he was injured, but the previous two years when he was a top 10 fantasy option, he and he spent half the year scorching the earth and half the year just absolutely stinking it up, there were large stretches where Russell Wilson sucked for fantasy purposes, where he wasn't it's good. True. I just went and looked. You know, he's in the... Uh, the teens, the 20s on a weekly finish, multiple weeks in a row, and then he follows it up with the number one overall quarterback finish. 
this is kind of how he's been for years. So it might just be, I mean, he could be a trade for target because of how bad he's been. It does not mean he's going to continue being awful. I think I'm going to go on the side of longevity and history at his age. He's He has not aged out of the position versus just this two, three, four week sample of looking poor. Russ Wilson against the Indianapolis Colts or Jared Goff against the New England Patriots. I would go, on the, it's on the road. I would go Russell Wilson. I know Goff has been on fire, but that was against Seattle at home uh, against the Patriots on the road. I, I don't, the, the, you know, the, the Aaron Rodgers wasn't great at home against the Patriots last week. Carson Wentz at home against the Titans or Russ Wilson. That, I'm going to hope for a better Russ game on primetime. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take the Thursday night football game. Okay. Uh, are are you ho in the hopes that this offense does get it going at some point? Are you interested in a trade for target of Jerry Judy at all? Not Judy. Yeah. I just the more that I see, the less that I believe he's going to be the elite breakout that we hoped he was. Not that he can't be relevant for fantasy. You know, he was the wide receiver seventeen last week, but uh, I I don't think that the hopeful hey this guy's gonna be you know going into the season there was the hope that Sutton and Judy could both be top 15 wide receivers that just does not appear to be in the cards last week three for 31 Michael Pittman on the other side I wanted to just circle back to him real quick uh any worry about uh pity city not a bunch because he's just so necessary last week he had two different touchdowns um that were he caught both balls out of bounds on one, out of bounds on the next, uh, on the same drive. It was so close to being fine. It was disappointing, but he's he's getting the targets. Would you rather have Sutton or, or Pittman rest the season? Great Ooh, question. Yeah. One I asked myself this morning without being able to come to an answer. So I I think Sutton. Yeah, but man, man, I just I kept going back and forth in my head because the youth and upside of Pittman seems better to me than Cortland Sutton, but Cortland Sutton... age gap's not really big, is it? Well, I mean, I mean Sut well, Sutton's been in the league for... Cortland uh, Sutton's about to be 27, <clears throat> and okay. Michael Pittman is 25. Okay, so a couple of years, a couple of years of experience. My point is... This is dynasty, so, then, that you're thinking about? Because uh, I was just thinking rest of this season. It, it, was, it was both. I think they're kind of similar. Like, if you thought for sure one player would be far better better this year that's probably who you'd want for dynasty i, mean, I think that's got to be Cortland sutton you think so you would, i got more so confidence in, in russell wilson than i do matt ryan i got more confidence in their office of line and him figuring it out than matt ryan and alec pierce is emerging a little bit they have three tight ends i mean i think i think sutton is just kind of locked at a, a really high floor and we've seen Pittman's floor can get as bad as last week and it's th the target share for Cortland sutton over the last three weeks is thirty three percent. So that's yeah. that's yeah. juicy. Very juicy. Very anything juicy. else from this game you guys want to talk about? Again, we'll be live, ballerslive dot com on Thursday, covering this game. Join us here. Uh we'll be in the studio. Deucers will be here sharing insights from the game. Anything else from this matchup? I don't think so. It's a pretty easy one. Okay. All right. All the rankings, the start sit tool, all available on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. That is going to do it for today's episode of the podcast. A reminder, we will be live tonight as well on Spotify Live, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Grab the Spotify app if you want to tune in. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.